king of Israel. Who was Solomon? David Solomon. Who else? Was, what was his a nickname for him? The wisest king that ever lives, or the wisest man, okay, that God gave him wisdom. So uh, besides God, he had the most wisdom, so we want to learn what he wrote. So many of us want to read what, a, what an author, what Donald Trump reads about business or other things. I want to learn what, what Proverbs teaches me, amen? What the Word of God teaches us. Verse 2, <laughs> to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding. Verse 3. To receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, judgment, and equity, verse 4, to give prudence to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion, verse 5. A wise man will hear and increase learning, and a man of understanding will obtain wise counsel. Is every counsel wise that we receive? No. Have we received some counsel? Is it man? Right? That's terrible counsel. And if we receive some counsel, man, that goes right on counsel. Amen? Amen. Verse 6. Go. <laughs> to understand the proverb and an enigma, the words of the wise and their riddles, verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. When it says there the fear of the Lord, what's it talking about? Respect. Reverence. Not being afraid of God. So the reverence of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. So how many people here say that they respect, love, and fear the Lord? Raise your hand. Okay. Do we study his Bible every day? His word? So we say that we respect him, but yet we don't want to spend time with him. We spend time with the news, we spend time with so many other things, yet we say one thing, but our actions demonstrate something else on there. And that's again, we're studying here, not condemning anybody, not criticizing anybody, but we want 2014 to be the best year, the most productive year of each of our lives in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Amen. So let's start it off correctly in Jesus' name. Proverbs chapter 2, the value of wisdom. That's all we read for the value of wisdom. Ready? Go. My son, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you, too, so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding, three, yes, yes if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding, four, if you seek her as silver, and search for her as for a hidden treasure. So stop. If I were saying to you that there's a million dollars hidden in this place, what would you do right now? Turn it out. No. Would you sit, be seated there? Would you wait till it's over? Or would you start looking for it right now? Looking for, looking for right now, right? So it's there. Seek for wisdom as if it was for hidden treasures. So we got to seek it with energy. Oh my God, let me read. it's time for me to read. I haven't read this morning. Let me read. Is that seeking it with all our hearts? How, how many of us, how, when we go to work, how do we go to work? Do we go with energy? Do we go to make our money with enthusiasm? Or we just go through the motions? Okay, so here is telling us, seek her, meaning wisdom, as silver. Search for her as if for hidden treasures. Verse 5. Then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Verse 6. For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. Where is the mouth of the Lord? Through the Bible. I become a mouthpiece for God when? When I'm speaking his word. When I'm speaking Renee's word, who am I a mouthpiece for? Renee. To Renee. <laughs> okay? But when I'm speaking to you the word of God, then I become a mouthpiece for God, so do you. When you speak to somebody about the word of God, accurately quoting it, not almost quoting it, but accurately quoting it, then you become the word of uh, the, the mouth of God. Amen? Verse 7. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk uprightly. If I'm not walking uprightly, will God protect me? No. I told you, in prison, I met people in, in, in the world. They go do uh, rob banks, do different things. And they say, I pray to God uh, uh, for, for, for protection. You know, 
is, is not going to get that protection. Only when you're walking uprightly will God protect you. Amen? Amen. Verse 8. He guards the paths of justice and preserves the way of his saints. So who are God's saints? Those statues in the corner in the church? No, we are God's saints. Okay, we are God's saints and he preserves the path of justice. If I'm not doing justice to Laura, you think God is going to protect me? If I have wicked intentions against her, is God going to guide me? No, you understand? So we have to have a uh, walk in paths of justice, have right motives with people, with situations, and then you will preserve our way. Verse 9. No. Then you will understand righteousness and justice. Everybody, equity and every good path. Verse 10. When wisdom enters your heart and knowledge is pleasant to your soul, stop. And knowledge is, bring that back verse 10. Knowledge is pleasant to your soul. If I share with you something that you're doing, and it is against the word of God, but we're doing it, is that a knowledge going to be pleasant to us? No. When, you, when your toes get stepped on, do we like it? No. So that's why when knowledge is pleasant to your soul, when we say, man, I'm doing something, and it's, God doesn't like it, what do I have to say? Well, God, I just like it, or God, I repent and change my ways. You follow me? So then, if knowledge is pleasant to our soul, to your soul, verse 11, discretion will preserve you, and understanding will keep you, verse 12, to deliver you from the way of evil, from the man who speaks perverse things, verse 13, from those who leave the path of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness. Verse 14, who rejoice in doing evil and delight in the perversity of the wicked. 15, whose ways are crooked and who are devious in their paths. 16, to deliver you from the immoral woman, from the seductress who flatters with her words. 17, who forsakes the companion of her youth and forgets the covenant of her God. Verse 18. For her house leads down to death, and her path to the dead. 19. None who go to her return, nor do they regain the path of life. Verse 20. So you may walk in the way of goodness, and keep to the path of righteousness. 21. For the upright will dwell in the land, and the blameless will remain in it. Verse 22. But the wicked will be cut off from the earth, and the unfaithful will be uprooted from it. So let's just look at one more Proverbs uh, for today, which is guidance. You know what? No. I'm going to, um, let's, for the sake of time, let's look at Jeremiah 4.22. Do not forsake God's wisdom in 2014. Ready? Read. For my people are foolish. They have not known me. They are silly children. And they have no understanding. They are wise to do evil. Or to do good, they have no knowledge. Who is he talking about? His people. Talking about us. Verse Hosea 4, verse 6. Ready? Go. My people, once again, are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I will also reject you from being priests for me. Because you have forgotten the law of your God, I also will forget your children. So now, to finish up for today, I'm going to leave us with, a, uh, with an example of Solomon, which as we saw before, he's the wisest king who ever lived. Solomon was asked in a, by God in a dream what he wanted. And what did Solomon ask for? Wisdom. Wisdom. So if God comes to you in a dream uh, tonight, this afternoon, what do you want? Don't say I want gold, I want a billion dollars, I, I, I want uh, to live for 120 years, ask for wisdom, and, and you're going to see what God is going to give to us. First Kings chapter 3, verse 1 through 15, the quick story of Solomon and his dream with God. First Kings 
uh, chapter 3, verse 1 through 15. And we're going to see that when did God appear to Solomon? After he gave an offering, not before. So some of us want to get close to God, and you're going to see here when he appeared uh, to, uh, to Solomon. Let's all read. Ready? Go. Now Solomon made a treaty with Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and married Pharaoh's daughter. Then he brought her to the city of David until he had finished building his own house and the house of the Lord and the wall all around Jerusalem. Verse 2. Meanwhile, the people sacrificed at the high places because there was no house built for the name of the Lord until those days. Okay? Verse 3. And Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statues of his father David, except that he had sacrificed and burned incense at the high places. Verse 4. Now the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. Solomon offered what? A thousand burnt offerings on that altar. So remember, we read that a burnt offering at that time was like a sheep. Okay. Now, how many of us have gone to a, a butcher? Um, what do you call it? A slaughterhouse. slaughterhouse. Or the, where they sell pigs and chicken and all that. We have one in Burger like here, a few blocks away. Do they smell nice? No, right? So now imagine you have a thousand and you're, you're uh, uh, skinning them a lot. Like we don't read that. And killing a thousand at once for one offering. Okay? The, the amount of manpower to kill a thousand animals to burn them all in one shot for one offering. One man. All right? So you see, like, a thousand burnt offerings, we've got to see. Ooh, that, that does take time to, to pull the skins off and to, to burn them all and, and prepare them correctly. And what about the flies? Just imagine all that. Uh, you know, that's going on in those times, okay? So Solomon offered a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. And remember, in those days, what was your wealth counted in? In your animals, okay? So you had a lot of animals, so at one time, taking a thousand for one offering, all right? So we get, we get the picture now, right? Verse 5, go. And give, at Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask, what shall I give you? Okay? Verse 6. And Solomon said, You have shown great mercy to your servant David, my father, because he walked before you in truth, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart with you. You have continued this great kindness for him, and you have given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. Verse 7. Now, O Lord, my God, you have made your servant king instead of my father David. But I am a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. So this is young Solomon, all right? Verse 8. And your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to be numbered or counted. Verse 9. Therefore, give to your servant an understanding heart to judge your people, that I may discern between good and evil. For who is able to judge this great people of yours? So is that something good to ask God for? God, give me a good discerning heart so I know who's conning me, who deserves to be put in this position, who do I give this promotion to, who do I marry, uh, what, two kids of mine are fighting, what, who do I believe? You follow me? Give me a good heart to be able to discern between good and evil. Verse 10. The speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. All right? Verse 11. Then God said to him, this is the bonus now, because you have asked this thing and have not asked long life for yourself, nor have asked riches for yourself, nor have asked the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern justice. Verse 12. Behold, I have done according to your words. See, I have given you a wise and understanding heart, so that there has not been anyone like you before, nor shall any like you arise after you. Verse 13. 
and have also given you what you have not asked, all right? Both riches and honor, so that there shall not be anyone like you among the kings all your days. Verse 14. So if you walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commandments as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your days. Verse 15. Then Solomon awoke, and indeed it had been a dream. And he came to Jerusalem and stood before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, offered up burnt offerings, offered peace offerings, and made a feast for all his servants. Amen? So if any of us lack wisdom or want more wisdom, seek God through the Bible. And the last scripture for today, James chapter 1, verse 5. Ready? Read. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. Amen? So ask God, study the Bible, be led by the Holy Spirit, and do all things in the name of Jesus, and do everything like you're doing it unto God and not unto man in uh, Jesus' name for 2014. Amen? Amen? Amen. So now, to finish up for today... I just want to declare a blessing on Hudson Church, on each of your lives. Uh, so I just want you to hear these and, and, and you receive it. Uh, receive it by faith in Jesus' name. And for those of us uh, are following us in YouTube and also following us on Vimeo, this blessing is for all of you for the year 2014. Amen? So we have to declare these blessings into each of our lives. So number one, I declare that you are blessed with God's supernatural wisdom and that you have a clear direction for your life. Do you receive it? Say amen. 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 You do. Okay. I declare that you are blessed with creativity, with courage, with ability, and with abundance. Amen. Amen. I declare that you are blessed with a strong will and with self-control and self-discipline. I declare that you are blessed with a great family, with good friends, with good health, and with faith, favor, and fulfillment. Amen. I declare that you are blessed with success, with supernatural strength, with promotion, and with divine protection. Amen. I declare that you are blessed with an obedient heart and with a positive outlook on life. Amen. I declare that any curse that has ever been spoken over you, any negative evil word that has ever come against you, is broken right now in Jesus' name. Amen. I declare that you are blessed in the city, that you are blessed in the country, that you are blessed when you go in, and you are blessed when you come out. Amen. And I declare that everything you put your hands to do is going to prosper and succeed in Jesus' name. Amen. And I declare that you are blessed, that 2014 will be the most blessed year of your life in Jesus' name. Do you receive it out to church? Amen. Amen. So receive it in Jesus' name. All heads bow, all eyes closed. For the altar call, three altar calls for this morning. Altar call number one is for, to become born again. 